With the advancements in marriage equality, the LGBT community has made great strides both politically and culturally. What challenges still remain for this community? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and I'm joined by Darlene Nipper, Deputy Executive Director of the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force. Darlene, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So you heard the open a few moments ago, significant strides. Uh, still a lot of work to be done on, on the marriage front for on, on many different levels. Uh, but the question becomes is what is the next frontier in LGBT rights, responsibilities, and so forth? Yeah, I think it's a really important question because the reality is that the Supreme Court had the rulings this summer. At the same time that they ruled on marriage, they also, in some ways, gutted the Voting Rights Act. Sure. And sometimes we don't think of that as an LGBT issue, but in fact, a person like me who's an African-American lesbian could go in some places and actually uh, be able to get married in a state but be turned away from the polls. Uh, obviously, there are other issues like employment discrimination. So we still don't have a federal non-discrimination bill at the at the federal level. So from a technical standpoint or legal standpoint frankly you could be fired for being out and part of the LGBT community. Absolutely. Think about it. You go out, you get married, you bring your photo to the office like anybody else would, sure. put it on the desk, have someone in there who feels uh, who's offended by that who could actually f fire you and you wouldn't have federal protections for that. You know, it's interesting uh, because I'm not sure a lot of people realize that and just in terms of the ramifications in some of the quote unquote smaller issues that are really big issues. Just, I mean, just think for a moment. You, you, you get married, to your point, you bring in a picture of your spouse or perhaps maybe you bring your spouse uh, to a company picnic or a, uh, a holiday function. Absolutely. Someone's offended by that, you still could be fired for that. Absolutely, and not have any recourse at the federal level. And what the issue is that at the state level, there's so much uh, difference from state to state, as you know, just like with the marriage uh, uh, laws. Sure. In some places, we, we have 12 uh, states in the District of Columbia that have uh, marriage laws now. So there's very, very uneven uh, circumstances for people depending on where they actually live in this country. And that's important. Darling, you say uneven. Some would say uh, not equality. It's not equal in, in many, many different ways. Uh, I want to move on to um, also another big issue, which is immigration. Sure. That's not really a top of mind right now, but in the LGBT community, that's still very much an issue. It actually is. Immigration is incredibly important. I think people People don't think about this, but there are more than 250,000 undocumented LGBT people in this country. So you're talking about more that. than a quarter of a million LGBT people who are undocumented, who can be separated from their families, have uh, unfair treatment and detention, and so on. There, it's a real issue for the LGBT community, and we have to continue to fight for something that's fair and that really addresses all the issues, including a path to citizenship. And when for you say fight for, uh, realistically, do you think that's something that the Congress, given the budget battles, given the fiscal woes that we're in, given the, the, the just the, the heightened tense of, of partisanship, do you think this stuff will actually get through the Congress either sometime later on this year or early next? Well, I think this is what's in front of us now, and this is why there's so much energy. It's what we're fighting for. We need the Congress to act. This is the place where each of these issues, both the Federal Non-Discrimination Act, the ENDA, as well as comprehensive immigration, are before Congress. We need them to do what they need to do for people to get the fair treatment and not experience discrimination. You know, darling, we have about 30 seconds left. Uh, I believe this Congress is actually the, with the highest number number of LGBT members ever. I think there's something like five or six exactly. or something like that. With those numbers, do you believe that there's a higher likelihood that the issue at least will be discussed oh, the issues at the are, national level? Absolutely. I think the issues are on the table. I think we have to continue to get folks into policymaking positions who represent our issues and who can be in the Congress both on the And we've got about 20 seconds left. Are you optimistic that something will be able to happen sometime in 2013 or sometime in 2014? I'm optimistic that we will get a vote in the Senate on ENDA in 2013. All right, Darlene Nipper, thank you very much for joining us always. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.